Hello everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. Today we are going to solve the problem, check if array pairs are divisible by k. In this problem we are given an array of integers of size n and another integer k. We want to divide the array into exactly n by 2 pairs such that the summation of each element in the pair is divisible by k. We have to return true in case we can do that, else we have to return false. So let us see what the problem statement is saying using an example. This is the given example. Here the k is 5. So we have to convert the given array into n by 2 pairs and the summation of both the elements inside each pair should be divisible by should be a multiple of 5. So we can combine 1 with 4. That way we will end up having 1 comma 4 as a pair. Another pair could be 2 and 3. Then 2 and 3 is done. 1 and 4 is done. 5 can go with 10. So 10 is done and 5 is done. Then 6 can go with uh, let me see. 6 can go with 9. Okay. 6 comma 9 this will make it as 15 the summation will be 15 in this case and that is divisible by 5 then 7 is uh, 7 can go with 8 so 7 plus 8 is again 15 7 comma 8 then we have 15 and 20 that will give us a total of 35 and that is also divisible by 5 so these are n by 2 pairs that we can obtain now what can we do to make such pairs we can see that if we look at the modulo of each of these elements so for this one the modulus with respect to 5 is 1 for this the modulus with respect to 5 is 4 the summation of both these modulo when combined ends up 1 plus 4 is equals to 5 similarly if we go for this one the modulus with respect to 5 is 2 the modulus with respect to 5 is 3 the summation would again be 5. This is the summation of the modulus of both the elements. In this case, the modulus is 0. Here also the modulus is 0. So the summation of modulus is 0. Here, the modulus of 6 with respect to 5 is 1. The modulus of 9 with respect to 5 is 4. So 4 plus 1 is again 5. So either the modulus summation of the modulus is equals to 5 or the summation of modulus of both these elements inside the pair is equals to 0. So first of all, we have to find the modulus of all of the elements which are present inside the array. So let us move on to the first step and try to implement this. Then we can see what additional we can do once we are done with this step. So we are going to have a map of type int and then we will be storing the modulus of each of these elements for auto a belongs to array m of a modulus k plus plus now we have the modulo and we have to combine the modulus such as such that the summation is equals to the given k or the summation is equals to zero so for those element for which the summation is initially 0, for example, uh, 5 in this case, 5, 10, 15 and 20. So the number of such elements, the modulus is equals to 0. The number of such elements should be equals to an even number so that they can form pairs. So we can, we can check whether the number of such elements are even. So once that is done, we will go for those elements which have modulus as 1 with respect to 5. So in this case, the such elements are uh, the element number 1, then the element 6. So these are only two elements which have modulus 1. Now they can combine with an element which is having modulus 4. So... 4 is having a modulus 4 and then 9 is also having a modulus 4 so 1 can combine with either 9 or 4 and 6 can also combine with either 4 or 9 
so number of elements which are having modulus as 1 and the number of elements which are having modulus as 4 so they should be equal in count similarly the elements which are having modulus as 2 and elements which are having modulus as 3 they should be equal in count so that is what we have to check here in case they are not equal we are sure to return a false in that case so let's say let me give you a counter example for this one as well let's say we have something like this one then two three then we can have a four over here and mm, let's say another element is seven so when k is equals to five let me now list the module of each of them with respect to k here it will be 2 it is going to be 4 it is going to be 3 2 and 1 1 is going to combine with an element having a modulus 4 so that element is 4 itself 2 is going to combine with an element having a modulus as 3 and it is the element 3 now again we have an element which is having a modulus that is 2 now it in turns need an element which is having a modulus 3 but there is no such element present there is only one element actually uh, which is going to make a pair with 2 so the number of elements which are having modulus as 2 are 2 the number of elements which are having modulus 3 which should be combined with 2 is only 1 so the count of them is not equal so we are sure to return false in such cases what we are going to do is we will be checking from let us first check for 0 if m of 0 is is odd in count so if this is odd we have to return false now we are going to go from i is equals to 1 i is smaller than n I'm sorry i is more than k i plus plus if m of i if m of i is not equals to m of k minus i then return false else we have to return true now this being done we are sure to handle all the cases which only have numbers as positive integers so I hope it should give the correct answer for them true true false true false so true true false true false so for the last one it is wrong because there are negative elements as well that we need to handle now in the next step we are going to handle the negative cases let us say this is the example and given k is 10 now if we are storing the modulus uh, with respect to each of them the modulus okay let me take another k a shorter k let the k b equals to 3 now here the modulo is minus 1 here the modulo will be 1 here the modulo will be minus 2 the modulo will be 2 it is going to be 0 it is going to be 0 it is going to be minus 1 it is going to be 1 now the count of elements having modulo as minus 1 is 2 having a modulo 1 is Two again having a modulo minus 2 it is for the minus 2 it is also 2 for 0 it is 2 as well so what we are checking is we are going to check whether this the the, the element which are having modulo as 1 the count of such element is it same as the element which is having modulo as 2 but there are no such elements which are having modulo as 2 so it is returning false what instead we can do is we can combine these two elements together that will give us a zero we can combine these two elements together that is going to give us a zero and these two elements are going to pair up and give us zero similarly these two elements so they will all result in the summation of zero and zero is obviously divisible by three the other thing that we can do is we can combine minus one with 4 1 can combine with minus 4 
minus 2 can combine with 2 and minus 3 can combine with 3 so this is another possibility so there's a slight change that we can do to handle such cases if we are checking for the modulo of minus 1 it is going to give us minus 1 it can combine with an element which is having modulo as 1 so 1 is having a modulo 1 so 1 can combine with minus 1 but the other thing that uh, can combine with 1 is the element which is having a modulus 2 so such an element can also combine with 1 so 1 can combine with either an element which is having a modulus 3 minus 1 that is equals to 2 or one can combine with minus 1 which is the negative of itself so this minus 1 uh, this could be considered as equivalent to 2 now how can we make minus 1 equivalent to 2 minus 1 plus k modulo k in this case k is 3 and it is going to result in 2 let me explain you what I am trying to say so let us say there is an element the given k is 3 there is an element which is having a modulus as 2 the other possibility could be that can combine with this 2 is an element which is having a modulus as minus 2 or an element which is having a modulus as 1 now these two are considered as equivalent so minus 2 could be written as minus 2 plus 3 modulo 3 which will result in 1 so this is equivalent to this so when I am storing these elements instead of storing them as it is I am going to first convert them and then take the modulo yeah and take the modulo with respect to k now it is giving us false for the last case and it should give us true let me see if it is negative okay so yeah now it should be correct if we go for the time complexity it is going to be big O of n because we are taking an unordered map here so the order doesn't matter we can go for an unordered map the time complexity is big O of n the space complexity is also big O of n it is giving us correct answer if you enjoy these kind of videos please help me by subscribing to the channel and in case you like this particular video please leave a thumbs up down below if you want any improvement or suggestions please comment them below thank you